Good morning, everyone. Let me start by thanking the organizers for inviting me to participate in this conference. I really appreciate that. And thank you to Seb for chairing this session. I know this is going to be a really great conference. Also, thank you for indulging me and allowing me to present this video as I wasn't able to be there in person this morning. Today I want to tell you about some chemistry that we've been doing in our group regarding the allylation of nitrogen heterocycles and how this has led us down some paths that we hadn't anticipated but have opened up some really interesting doors for sustainable chemistry. Uh, and so the title of my talk is From Allylation to CH Activation, New Directions in Sustainable Chemistry. And of course, if you want to think about green chemistry and sustainable chemistry, a topic that we've been interested in for a long time, uh, you, you have to think about carbon-hydrogen activation as a key strategy to think about doing efficient chemistry. The idea, of course, is to take a carbon-hydrogen bond and functionalize that into some kind of a useful organic compound that has function. The chemistry I want to talk to you about today begins with some interest we had in developing allylation reactions utilizing pyelopalladium complexes to selectively functionalize nitrogen heterocycles for medicinal chemistry. And so, for example, we have uh, this quinazlinone, which has three different nucleophilic sites on it that could potentially react with an electrophilic allopalladium complex. And what we see when we utilize things like allyl acetate, allyl carbonates, allyl phosphonates, that we get selective functionalization of just one of the nucleophilic sites in this molecule with an allyl group. And of course, uh, this Sujitrost allylation reaction has been used for decades in, in th literally thousands of different contexts. In order to generate an electrophilic pyeloplatinum complex in the suji trost allylation reaction, it requires the use of some kind of functionalized allylic species that undergoes oxidative addition with palladium zero. Generally, this requires a pretty good leaving group, and so allyl alcohol derivatives need to be even derivatized further to weaken that CO bond in order to do oxidative addition. In 2015, we reported a green process to do this nitrogen allylation reaction utilizing instead of activated allyl alcohol derivatives, allyl alcohol directly. And the scope of this reaction is pretty general with regards to the types of allyl alcohols you can use. We can use conjugated aromatic allyl alcohols. They work in very high yield as well as aliphatic alcohols, even secondary alcohols as you can see here. Interestingly, when we use butene diol, that reaction resulted in the formation of a dienamid after elimination of one of the alcohols, which also could be a very useful process. Of course, all of these reactions still rely on having to have an oxidized form of the allyl system in the form of an allyl alcohol. Ideally, we would like to be able to carry out this reaction to generate pyalyl palladium complexes directly from olefins themselves, where we do an oxidation of an allylic carbon-hydrogen bond. And that would be a much more efficient and greener process. Now, there, this is nothing new, and I don't have time to go into all of the literature on allylic oxidation, uh, but this has been done and carried out stoichiometrically since the 1960s when this were, these types of reactions were reported by Suji and Trost. It became more practical in the 2000s, and I want to point to the work of Christina White, who developed a reaction such as this, where olefins could undergo oxidation using palladium acetate with this bidentate bisulfoxide ligand under oxidative conditions to catalytically generate pyeloplatinum complexes which undergo nucleophilic addition with carbon nucleophiles. So we tried to utilize these protocols in our nitrogen allylation reaction of quinazlinone and everything we tried completely failed. We're not sure why the reaction doesn't work, but we could not get this reaction to go. We were very happy to find that using simple palladium chloride as the catalyst in the presence of DMBQ as the stoichiometric oxidant and just doing this in DMSO resulted in a very efficient formation of pyalyl palladium complexes and the allylation of these nitrogen heterocycles. I will point out that this was the first report of oxidative addition into allylic carbon hydrogen bonds utilizing simple palladium chloride. Is this reaction typically requires acetates in order to generate the pyalyl complexes. As you can see, this reaction also seems to be quite general for a variety of different allylic species, both um, aromatic, as you can see, with all of these conjugated systems. But we're very happy to see the reaction does work with simple um, terminal olefins on aliphatic chains. So it appears to be somewhat general. 
with regard to the type of olefin you can use. We took a closer look at the formation of the pilopalladium complex utilizing this method of palladium chloride, and I can just share with you some of our initial observations about this reaction. We speculate that dimethyl sulfoxide is important for that process without having acetates present. When we mixed together palladium chloride and DMSO, we were able to observe the formation of palladium chloride DMSO complex, as you can see from this crystal structure here. When we treated that with terminal olefins, we were able to form the pyalyl palladium chloride dimers through CH activation or oxidation of that allylic CH bond. Now we think that dimethyl sulfoxide may be involved in this redox chemistry because one of the byproducts we isolated from this was some of the palladium dichloride dimethyl sulfide complex, which we think may be produced by the reduction of dimethyl sulfoxide. We haven't fully examined this yet and quantified everything, and so at this point it's a working hypothesis that DMSO is acting as the oxidant in this reaction. The facile formation of the pyalopalladium complex directly from palladium chloride led us to think about how to utilize that to generate pre-catalysts for a variety of reactions. And uh, as you can see here, there's been some history of the development of pre-catalysts beginning with these palladium phosphine complexes from uh, Herman, Beller, and Buchwald, and Buchwald later developed these nitrogen complexes. Mike Organ developed these palladium-2 complexes with pyridine and NHC ligands. Uh, this has been further refined by Colcott and Shaughnessy with these uh, pyalyl phosphines. And of course, most recently, uh, Nolan uh, and Hazari have developed these pyalyl complexes with NHC ligands as well. These well-defined palladium-2 precatalysts are useful for generating, with very exquisite control of the stoichiometry, palladium-0 complexes in solution that act as catalysts for palladium-0 catalyzed reactions. One of the problems with these reactions is that if it's very slow, the palladium-0 catalyst can actually react with the palladium-2 complex in solution to generate these bimetallic palladium-1 species, which basically shuts down the catalytic cycles. So a lot of work has been done to develop sterically hindered allyl systems that slow down the reaction of palladium zero with the palladium two. We envisioned our ability to generate pyalopalladium complexes directly in situ from olefins and palladium dichloride would allow us to prepare a, a large variety of pyalopalladium complexes very easily in order to pre-screen for potential useful pre-catalysts. To demonstrate this concept, we looked at an in situ reaction utilizing different olefins with palladium chloride to generate a pyalyl complex, which is indicated over here in blue, which in this particular reaction undergoes formation of palladium zero, and that palladium zero then reacts with these styrenes to generate a pile of palladium complex that we want to utilize as an electrophile to react with quinazolinone. And so what we see here is a competition reaction between the initially formed pile complex from the olefin we added in catalytic amount versus the desired reaction, the activation of these propargillic systems. What we observed is as those pre-catalysts become more and more electron deficient, we're seeing an increased amount of generation of palladium zero and then formation of the desired electrophile, suggesting that the rate of reduction of the palladium-2 precatalyst to palladium-0 is increasing as the nature of the allyl ligand on that precatalyst becomes more electron deficient. This ability to quickly screen the allyl moiety of these palladium-2 precatalysts allowed us to generate a general reaction that worked for a variety of different substrates. These electron deficient palladium-2 precatalysts were also very efficient at allowing us to do some difficult palladium-0 catalyzed reactions, such such as some difficult Suzuki Miera couplings, uh, Buchwald Hartwig aminations, and some Suji Trost allylations. We were able to use this to prepare and isolate these electron deficient precatalysts, as shown in this slide. We first reacted palladium chloride with the electron deficient trifluoromethyl substrate in DMSO for two hours and then added in uh, the NHC ligand shown here to generate the pyalopalladium complex in 78% yield. We were able to demonstrate the validity of our in situ generated precatalyst system by comparing it directly with the reactions performed with the isolated catalyst. And you can see that demonstrated here with these ester and amide type cross-coupling reactions where uh, utilizing the isolated preformed catalyst resulted in 98% yield, whereas doing our in situ process of mixing everything together, not isolating this catalyst, resulted in the formation of this coupled product in 99% yield. Compare that to the typical pre-catalyst systems that have been reported for those substrates, the cinnamol derivatives were not as efficient. A similar result
result was obtained with the ester coupling, where our preformed catalyst resulted in an 82% yield of this ketone, whereas the in-situ generate catalyst was nearly as good, uh, both equally as good as the cinnamal derivative that's been reported in the literature. I want to come back and talk about this reaction of quinazolinone with the pile of palladium complex generated from olefins in the presence of palladium chloride and DMSO that we reported. This reaction worked very well with all kinds of different olefin substrates where R is aromatic or aliphatic, and they all gave this n allylated product with the exception of one allyl derivative, and that allyl derivative was indole. When we utilized indole in this reaction, we did not see any product resulting from the oxidation of the allylic hydrogen to form the pilopalladium complex. Instead, the product that we obtained was the result of the addition of the nitrogen heterocycle to the two position of the allyl indole, suggesting that we're getting getting CH activation in a different location than the allylic CH. We are curious about the mechanism of this reaction and why indole followed another path. Typically, with all of the other olefins that we utilized, it is the allylic CH that undergoes oxidation to form a pilopalladium complex. And so presumably that could happen in this case as well. And we envision that this could potentially undergo a slippage of the pilil, uh, such as shown in this structure, to think about how we might functionalize that C2 position, then the nitrogen heterocycle could add to the C2 position of the indole, and then re-aromatization through rearrangement of that hydrogen would give us the product. That's one potential pathway. The other pathway to that product should involve some type of activation or insertion into the CH bond to generate uh, organometallic complex similar to this. Then ligand exchange could occur to create a palladium nitrogen bond and reductive elimination would form the product. To investigate the these pathways, we carried out some control experiments. And so let me explain these for you. In order to get some information about where exactly the palladium catalyst was acting on allylindole, we exposed allylindole with the palladium catalyst in the presence of deuterated methanol in the absence of any nitrogen nucleophile. We observed 72% deuterium incorporation at the C2 position of the indole and absolutely zero deuterium at the allylic position. That would suggest that under these conditions, there is no pile palladium complex being formed. However, that C2 position does seem to be active. Another piece of evidence to suggest that there is no pile palladium complex formed, we also looked at the substrate where the allylic position was blocked by the gem dimethyl groups, which cannot undergo oxidation to form a pile palladium complex. This was done in the presence of the nitrogen nucleophile, and we still observed formation, albeit in low yield, of the C2N functionalized product. We think the allyl group is important for directing that. As you can see in this series of experiments, Experiments, uh, utilizing a phenyl group, aldehyde, nitrile, or a double bond directly on the C3 position of the indole resulted in zero product formation. However, the allyl functionality, um, the homo allyl group, uh, the CH2 nitrile, the CH2 aldehyde, or the CH2 ester all produced the nitrogen heterocycle incorporation into the C2 position. So it seems that it doesn't have to be an allyl group. It looks like any kind of pi functionality can coordinate to the palladium and direct it. Our working hypothesis for now is that this reaction requires some type of a flexible pi coordinating group that can direct the palladium to undergo a CH activation or or functionalization of the two position of indole. Now we don't know exactly how that process occurs. Uh, we don't think that this process is by a direct CH insertion. We think it probably undergoes subtype of a friedel crafts type process with then loss of hydrogen and re-aromatization. Nevertheless, this reaction could proceed uh, to do ligand exchange to create the palladium nitrogen bond, which undergoes reductive elimination to generate the product that we observe. This observation encouraged us to explore a variety of different metals to see if they could also do this reaction. And we were very pleased to discover that simply using nickel dichloride, relatively inexpensive, earth-abundant metal, performed extremely well in this reaction. As a matter of fact, it was so much better than palladium. We think that's because the last reductive elimination step is a more facile process with nickel than it is with palladium. As you can see, the scope of this reaction is quite large. We can use a variety of different substituted indole derivatives. As you can see electron donating, electron withdrawing, halogens have no problem in this reaction, 
esters, aldehydes. They all give very high yields of the coupled product with quinazolinone. And you can see in all of these cases, nickel performs so much better than palladium. Here's some more examples with various functionalized quinazolinones, as well as simple pyridones. They work very well in these reactions also. Even in some cases where palladium didn't work at all, nickel was able to perform this reaction exceedingly well. The reaction works with methyl as well as the homoal in quite good yield. The only one so far that we've found that doesn't work is the terminally substituted olefin when we use the cinnamal derivative. Both for palladium and nickel, we got uh, no reaction. And just like the palladium, the nickel also seems to be very well directed by CH2 aldehyde, CH2 ester, and CH2 nitrile in very good yield. We're also very excited about the prospect of using iron to catalyze this reaction. We have some initial results that show that iron trichloride can do this reaction even without the substituent having a pi directing group such as an olefin or an aldehyde. We've only begun our work with the iron and I'll report those results as we get them. Today I've shown you that we've developed a really practical and efficient allylic oxidation of terminal olefins utilizing palladium chloride in DMSO. Uh, this allows us to carry out an in-situ generation of electron-deficient precatalysts, and we've developed this as a tool to be able to screen a variety of electron-deficient allylic precatalysts that allow us to do some very difficult cross-coupling reactions, and this led to the discovery of a C2 functionalization of indoles utilizing simple nickel chloride, which allows us to generate some really interesting bis-heterocyclic structures that we have a lot of interest in for medicinal chemistry, and we'll be exploring the biological activities of these types of structures in the near future. I want to acknowledge the students that carried out this work. All of this work was initiated by graduate student Sandy Vemula, who graduated his PhD in 2018, and a postdoctoral fellow, Dinesh Kumar. And this was followed up by Michael Chone, who discovered the iron chemistry, which is now allowing graduate students Nora Almoanis and Fayez Alotaibi to continue this work and explore more aspects of this reaction. Finally, I want to thank the people who funded this work. Our projects have been funded over the years by the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, the North Dakota EPSCoR program, an NIH Center for Protease Research on NDSU's campus, and of course, the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at North Dakota State University. I thank them, I thank my students, and I thank you for listening.